We know that there were millions of American voters who were deciding yesterday on the fate of reproductive rights in their state. Ten states had abortion measures on the ballot. Voters in at least seven of those states voted to expand or protect abortion rights, and Arizona is one of them, as is Missouri, where voters approved a measure to overturn the state's near-total abortion ban. The one concern uh, was Florida. For those who've been really advocating for change and enshrined rights, that will... uh, Florida. The ban on abortions after the sixth week of pregnancy will stay in place in Florida. There was an attempt to overturn it, but that was voted down. But we're going to stay in a Arizona. For our next guest, someone whom you met earlier in our campaign conversations, Dr. Deshaun Taylor is the founder and CEO of the Desert Star Institute for Family Planning. That is also a a, a center, a clinic which provides abortion services in Phoenix. And she's in Phoenix this morning. Dr. Taylor, welcome back. I'm glad to see you again. Thanks for having me. Uh, There's success and one loss to talk about, but I'd like to get your reaction to a number of things from yesterday. We thought abortion and reproductive freedom might be the ballot box question yesterday, the question, and it might draw women to the polls, men voting on behalf of women in their lives, but abortion and reproductive did not carry the day. What is your reaction to that overall? I'm disappointed, but not surprised. Arizonans are notorious for splitting ballots. And I had no question that the Proposition 139 would pass, but I was concerned that we would not see that what we needed to see in terms of some of the other things on the ballot that we needed people to vote for. And we're or, seeing that Kamala out Harris going morning. into office, Kamala Harris going in as president Correct. to again overturn uh, to restore Roe v. Wade. So. A mixed reaction given what happened. I want to talk, I'll talk about specifically Arizona in a moment, but now that Donald Trump is president elect and will be president come January, what do you think will happen federally? Do you think uh, uh, restrictions, further restrictions will be next? He hasn't entirely been clear in his position on a national ban. What do you think might happen? What we know is. Donald Trump says what's politically expedient for him to say at any moment in time. And what we also know is that Project 2025 exists. And it is a blueprint, a playbook for any Republican president who would take office. And in this case, it happens to be Donald Trump. So I have no question that there there will be attempts to move forward with the blueprint that was provided for this upcoming administration, which is written out in Project 2025. So I've been looking at some of that. In in Canada, we might not be as familiar with that, but part of Project 2025, this playbook, is looking at an antiquated law. Actually, goes back to the end of 1800s, 1873. It's something called the Comstock Act. It outlaws the mailing of abortion-related materials. And so this would allow, according to those who are concerned about this, shipping abortion pills, which account for so many of the abortions in the United States, shipping equipment to clinics like yours, that would all be banned. Is this an area of concern specifically for you? This has been something that many of us who operate abortion clinics across the country have been considering. And so definitely not being able to order and receive materials that we need to provide care would significantly impact our ability to do so. There are multiple different layers to consider related to this. And so definitely it would hamstring our ability to provide abortion care should some form of that be enacted federally. So a de facto ban, and I know that's what many are concerned about and why in some states they've looked at enshrining abortion rights at a state level, Arizona, let's come to the Arizona story particularly now because Arizona was one of the states that did so yesterday. What it has done is enshrined the right to an abortion in the state constitution up to fetal viability. That's 22 to 24 weeks, not the 15 weeks that did exist. So up to 22 to 24 weeks. What is your reaction to that uh, support of that vote yesterday? And what will it mean, do you think, uh, substantively in your practice? 
Well, I am glad that Arizonans overwhelmingly chose to enshrine the right to abortion in our constitution. This provides us, honestly, a floor uh, from which we can continue to work to regain access in, to and expand access to abortions for Arizonans. Um, the passage of this proposition does not de facto change the law. Um, we currently will continue to have a 15 week ban until some other things happen. Um, for example, having the right to abortion in the constitution then makes some of the laws currently on the books and being enforced unconstitutional. And so we have a pathway forward to uh, restore access based on that premise. Um, Ultimately, I want to remind people that restrictions on abortions passed even when Roe v. Wade was the law of the land. So not necessarily um, that we would automatically have a home hit a home run on this issue, but definitely having the right to abortion strengthens our position as we move forward in the work ahead to make sure Arizonans uh, have the right to abortion. So what do you think now will be the work, um, again, with Donald Trump back in the White House? What do you think will be the next steps in making sure these rights are protected or trying to have it uh, extended in terms of the protections for women? So here in my state, I'm looking at the elections in our U.S. House and not our U.S., excuse me, our Arizona House and Senate, where we... The GOP has had a very slim margin for several elections in a row in the US, in the House and Senate. And so we're watching those races to see if we can gain some seats to be able to move legislation forward that would improve the lives of Arizona is not only for the reproductive health, but in multiple areas. And so that is where our attention uh, is very important. Um, of course, federal protection is going to be necessary for the entire country because each state doesn't have a path to enshrining abortion rights um, for their state. So we definitely need to have our eyes on both of these situations moving forward, the building up to be able to provide protection nationally. So still work to do and the work will continue. Can I just yes. ask you one time to, to come back to where we began our conversation, Dr. Taylor, and I've appreciated it so much. One of the things that I was struck by was a comment from a voter in um, at Howard University in Washington where Kamala Harris was going to give, they hoped, a victory speech. And she told our reporter how disappointed she was that women didn't turn out, that women didn't turn out for women, but also to protect women and their autonomy and their bodies. Do you share any of that emotion on the, just on the personal level this morning? It's really a sad time but I think that many of us have been preparing ourselves for this outcome because we continue to see this outcome over and over again, where women vote for candidates where many of us believe that they are voting against their own interests. Ultimately, I don't want to get into playing the blame game and pointing fingers, but I will say this, that the fact that women did not overwhelmingly vote to protect our bodily autonomy says that there are some other things that many women care more about and in those things Trump our right to control what happens to our bodies. And many women are gonna, con and people who can become pregnant will continue to suffer. Our situation will become much worse. And I do know, I suspect that people will have buyer's remorse as we start to see uh, more and more of what we're already seeing with people dying, preventable deaths. We will watch that as the story. We'll see how it has an effect in Canada. We often have, of course, American women coming to Canada looking for health services they're no longer able to access in the state. So it's a big part of the story for us, too. And I thank you very much, Dr. Taylor, for your time and your perspective this morning. It's good to have you back on our program. Thank you.